Welcome to the Starting Over Podcast. I'm your host, Edward Shelton, a.k.a. Dark Logos, and this is a show where we look at the strategies, tactics, and mechanics behind the game of Hero Clicks. All right, it is a nice late Tuesday into Wednesday evening. Uh, brother got a, a good nap on. Uh, looking to, to have a nice show uh, up for you on this new year. Uh, there's a couple of things. Uh, that have gone on recently. I know there's been a bunch of previews, uh, and real talk, I there are a few things that I find that are interesting in the previews, but uh, mainly my main, uh, <laughs> mainly the thoughts that I've been having is they're doing their best to try to keep us interested without trying to make anything too game breaking um so uh yeah uh, i i think that's their goal but unfortunately i i think they have strayed a little bit far from their goal uh and and i'm gonna get into it uh in in just a bit but uh oh, i'm not sad about anything in earth x so far uh i i'm mildly disappointed with black bolt but Again, they're not trying to give us this running shot pulse wave monster, uh, which we're so used to having with Black Bolt. Uh, and because of that, I, I think it, it's a little disappointing. Just just a little disappointing. Uh, you want to... You, you expect certain things, you don't get them. And I, and I know, like, hey... What about sealed, Edward? This could be great sealed, and I, I don't know yet. Um, but I, I do think what they are trying to get us to do is think a little bit harder. Okay? Uh, and they're looking for us to try to have some creative solutions uh, and, and come up with some creative team building. And because of that, I, I think that we're in an interesting space. Uh, but is this going to be the the tempo going forward? Like like we're going to have these spikes like the Mighty Thor uh, set. And then in between these spikes, we're having everything just sort of taper off. And I think that's the reality that we're dealing with. Because if we look at the Mighty Thor set... Everything leading up to the Mighty Thor set was a bit meh. Okay. We, we've we been balancing off. Then we get a spike with the Mighty Thor set. Harley Quinn really is okay. X-Men is not so much strong because of, hey, look at me. I'm 150 points and I kill everything on the board. Uh, but more so, look at me. I have a bunch of utility and I come in at cheap. And we sort of saw that. A little bit with Avengers Affinity, we saw that a little bit with Batman, and we saw you know some more beat sticks in uh, Secret Wars, uh, Battle World, uh, but functionally most of of Secret Wars, Battle World, uh, we were we were mainly looking at figures in the range of like a hundred to to two hundred. Um, those figures were our main focus. So. One, one might ask, okay, where do you think the game's going, Edward? And I think right now the game is moving towards less stat focus, a little bit more power interaction focus, a lot more buff focused. And this is going to go lead into my main thoughts of today's show, more map focused. So, uh, I want you to, to get into my way back machine. And uh, we're, we're going to go back a couple of years. Uh, back, back, back to the past, you know, uh, Samurai Jack. Uh, to the point where, you know, uh, I used to wrote, write a blog. Uh, you know, I was super happy. Tenth anniversary was out. I was smiling ear to ear. You know, I was a little bit more optimistic on the game. I was still 
polishing up my 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 Jedi uh, hero click skills, and uh, out pops Spiral, not a ratted Spiral, pure unadulterated Spiral, and it crushed my hope in the game, mainly because Spiral eliminated the purpose of the map and if you paid attention to a lot of the commentary from from that time if you were playing people hated spiral because the map didn't matter positioning didn't matter uh, a lot of core elements in the game didn't matter because you could open up a spiral po a portal buff up a hypersonic speeder send it through kill your opponents you know buffer prober or spiral if you had the figure and send them back with immunity and because only one instance of the portal could exist at a time uh whoever had a spiral uh, and was active player could dictate where the portals were at so it it, it was bad but the complaints that came out of that and in a little bit later on with the Shatterstar tech was if you're going to create mechanics that just disregard the map, the game is no longer fun. And so you see a rise in special effects on maps becoming more dominant. And those those special effects being the main reason why you turn to most of those maps. Uh, I can classically say ranks was there so that if you got copycatted was one. Uh, also, it was good for a certain hypersonic speed melee pieces or, or pieces that need to have uh, aura effects where you had to get, you know, on top of your opponent. Uh, you know, anything that has like an open air effect uh, where you can knock people off and they take damage and they go somewhere else. Uh, I, I can go on and on and on. There are a lot of maps that classically were used because space didn't matter. So WizKids realized that, hey, we got to get these games more interesting, more involved, and they introduced hyper taxis. And people didn't cry about hyper taxis uh, as much because hyper taxis allowed for aggression. And since aggression isn't guaranteed like chess, where like I just do this and I automatically can take a piece and for sacrifice trades uh, and, and you have to roll, it still has some degree of risk because once you all in, that's it. Like there's there's no going back. There is nothing that you can do uh, as a player uh, to to undo that turn. You know, if, if you don't land your your prob rolls, buddy, I'm sorry. You know, uh, yeah, you don't you don't uh, open up your sorry. <laughs> if you don't land your attacks uh, when when you go out there, yeah, that's it. You're 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 stuck. Okay, and so there there wasn't so much of an issue about the map. But now we are at this point where I believe map is not in a good place. Okay, maps are not in a good place. Now let me explain why I feel maps are not in a good place. It's location bonuses. And in particular... Um, the new location bonus and in particular the the Tony Stark Tower map from the Earth X starter uh, I'm not going to unpack everything but I am going to talk about a, a couple of things that are just blatantly out there that have to be ruled on they just it just has to be ruled on and has to be looked at and and I'm and I'm a bit frustrated. Okay. So uh, if you can, uh, you can, thanks, Clickstoff. Uh, they have deciphered uh, a good chunk 
of the uh, the text on both sides of the starter map. And and I would also recommend to you uh, buy the starter. Uh, Whiz kids, you know we're we're neutral. I, I'm I'm trying to be positive with you. I'm telling people to buy your product. Okay, Zoran, hear me out. I'm I'm telling people to buy your product this time. It's broke. It's as broke as all get out, but I'm telling people to buy your product, okay, Zoran? Alright, so thank you to uh Clickstoff, magical transcriber persons, person, persons, conglomerate, uh uh attack helicopters, whatever you are, uh for for translating part of the blurred text with your computer vision okay uh, so let's let's go ahead and get into it now again it's not all completely ciphered you know the, the the chicken bones didn't quite lay out exactly all that was being said uh, but we do have a, a good idea of what was uh, being said in the text okay so so if you you hear me out and you know and have some patience because there might be some things that do change okay there there just might be some things that do change all right so what we know all right so location bonuses also because of this you need to get them the the uh, token pack again zoran i'm telling people to buy your product just for for this map for the iron avengers okay so uh location bonus iron avengers assembled Five points. Now, I know some of you will say, eh, they're all five points. And I, I'm going to come back and I'm going to point out why this is dumb. This is really bad from a game design perspective that this location bonus is so cheap. The bystanders printed on this map are Iron Avengers. At the beginning of the game, choose a friendly character of 50 points or more. That character has power. Roll a d6. If the result is odd, generate the matching Iron Avenger in the square, which it corresponds to. So there's there's six points, one, two, three, four, five, six, in the center of the map. Uh, that's pretty much what it lines up with. Okay? Uh, so uh, to the result, if that Iron Avenger isn't already on the map. If Earth-X Iron Man is on your starting force, he must be the chosen character. If so, uh, he can't generate Iron Avengers, I figure, from his card. Instead, this location bonus is a free action, and he generates an Iron Avenger on any result, not just an odd number. Okay. All right. Now, here's the thing. Corresponding to locations. Location, special terrain number one is Tank. Two is Monolith. Three is Crimson Sage. Four is Steel Bowl. Bow, five is bolt and six is sting. Now let's break down what each one of those does. Now also whoever was the CSI special agent that got uh, this picture from Wiz Kids are on the map of these pogs. Thank you and may God bless your household uh, because uh, this gives us a better reason why this whole entire thing is is completely jacked uh, and and super strong. All right, so um, let me get my little zoom in feature. All right, so they all the pogs functionally have an eight movement, uh, a ten attack, seventeen defense, and three or two damage. Okay, they they have three or or two damage. Uh, in most cases, it is uh, three damage. Okay, so let's start off with Tank. He starts off in number one. He has a, a super strength, charge. Uh, I We don't know his range, but let's just assume for right now it's something like four or five. Uh, 17 defense impervious. And oh, all these pogs are in Dom. All these pogs are in Dom. Uh, and he does three damage. Okay, so he flies. Oh yeah, all these pogs fly, which I will get into why this is bad uh, in a little bit. Next is Monolith. Monolith has sidestep, quake, uh, toughness, 
close combat expert, three damage, but he's also a giant. All right. Then we have Crimson Sage, which breaks this whole entire thing. Force Blast, Incapacitate, Energy Shield Deflection, and Prop. Yes, people, the Pog has Prop. Okay. Then we have Steel Bow. Steel Bow has Sidestep, Energy Explosion, Toughness, Range Combat Expert. Uh, Bolt has hypersonic speed, precision strike, super senses, I think two damage. And Sting has uh, running shot, psychic blast, 17 defense. And I think that's a two damage with a four range. And I think Bolt, Steel Bow has six range. Uh, Crimson Sage has five range. And I think Bolt has uh, a three range. Okay. Now, some of you will say... Dark Logos, there is nothing wrong with this. I have to roll to get one of these figures, these pogs out. What's, what's, why is you so mad? All right. I can't guarantee that I'm going to get Crimson Sage. But I, I would also argue none of these pogs are worth five points. All of these pogs are worth more than five points. Every single one of them is worth more than five points. Every single one of these pogs are better than the serpent pogs. Every single one of these pogs are better than the eight bat uh, eight pogs minus eight Batman, because sidestep out with you just can't beat that. Okay, and super strength, come on, eight Batman, and he's the cutest one. He's the cutest one, aren't you, 8 Batman? Aren't you, 8 Batman? Anyway, our consolation. Here we go. At the beginning of the game, generate a tank, Crimson Sage, or Sting Bystander in your starting area. So guess what? Hot diggity dog, if I lose map, I can automatically get a Crimson Sage. And that means for five points, if I lose map, I get a free prop. I get a five point prop. And, and I know some of you are, it's not sunk in yet. You're like, whatever, five point prop. Who cares? No. No. This is a huge problem. The cheapest prop that we've ever gotten in this game, okay, up until this point was Rookie Destiny. And that, I mean, to my knowledge, and let me let me make sure, let me make sure I'm not completely talking out the side of my butt. Um, and I'm going to type in less than 15 points. Golden Age, uh, prob. Okay, I take that back. Uh, world's finest black cat, but that really, I don't even think that counts. Yeah, because that one sort of sucked. So world. So other than that, the twi the the cheapest prob that we've had, like standard prob, because John Constantine doesn't count, people. Because I know you're probably looking at up to this magical point in this game has been twenty point rookie destiny, and a lot of you you old timers understand how bad that is with that twenty point rookie destiny and how many teams she ruined and how many teams she defeated and and how many times she was cloned okay there there are there were times where i popped out at least three of those suckers in my golden age games to just piss people off and back when prob was 10 range oh yeah she was hella op okay hella op all right now I at least had to invest 20 points and that figure from any one attack was going to die. Just any one attack, she was going to die. And I know recently in the modern era, we've been paying 25 points for prob. 25 points for three clicks, which might as well be a pog because that character is going to get one shot. We know it. 
There's there's no reason to not pretend that that figure is doesn't just get one shot at that that figure always gets one shot at your your rookie domino or vicky vale or whoever the hell else you're using that figure is getting one shot at. all right so when you tell me hey guy guess what you're running that you know no theme yeah you know you're not you're running no theme and and it's a high theme meta you, you know uh you want to you want an extra prop Hey, hey, guy! I know your shredder team is having a really hard time. Uh, your, your overdrive shredder team is having a real hard time because you don't have a single prop to your name. Wouldn't it be great if you drop one ID card for a prop? W w wouldn't you? Wouldn't you pay that guy? Oh, 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 guy! W wouldn't it also be great if, 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 if that one uh, pog, yeah could, you know, also carry your shredder guy and could also carry the rest of your grounded guys guy. Yeah, wouldn't that be great guy? Yeah, 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 yeah. That would be great guy. No, that is dumb. That is bad. That's bad game design. Bad game design. Someone should have checked them at the beginning and said, no, Scarlet Witch cannot have any support powers. That, that Scarlet Sage should not have any support powers. And I would be fine with this. I would be 100% fine with this. Because this map would be nice, but not mandatory. It would be nice, but not mandatory. So let me explain why I say it's mandatory. There's two points that you can look at this at. And it's point number one. I win map. Point number two, I don't win map. Point number two is real simple. I, I pretty much just pick uh, Crimson Sage every time. You know, you can make an argument for tank and you can make a slight argument uh, for, what's her name? Uh, Sting. You can make a, a minor argument for Sting. But realistically, you, you're not playing them. They suck. Unless you need somebody with charge super strength up front because that's the way the game is right now. You you don't want that, okay? So, you functionally have Crimson Sage this entire time as your main focus. Uh, yeah, yeah, pretty much the entire time as your main focus. Because she does the most. The second... I feel the second most impactful character uh, out of all this is Steel Bow. Uh, and then from that point on, it fluctuates between Bolt and uh, Monolith for third best. Sting and Tank are very situational. They are very, very situational characters. Steel Bow is by far a mandatory pog that you need to have out. Because he just provides too much pressure. Same thing with Bolt. Uh, but Bolt and Monolith on that map have the potential to create lots of problems for your opponent. In particularly Monolith. Alright, so let's, let's sort of take it to the point where I win map. If I win map, I just need a 50 point character. Oh, let's just say haha -ha Joker, who is pretty much dedicated to just being a support or being a minor pressure. Or you could, you could just say being a support and has willpower. And I could say like, hey, I have this 50 point or more character. They're not really doing much. They, they just sit here 90% of the time uh, like Devil Dinosaur. He just sits here 90% of the time. He doesn't really do much. What would happen if I just have them sit back and take power actions to try to bring in more Avengers? And while they're not, uh, whatchamacallit, uh, they are indomitable, but uh, they're not autonomous. While they, they are not autonomous, you have every incentive in most cases to push them so that once you have three or four of them out, 
you have every incentive to start pushing them so that you can get new instances, chances to get a new instance of them. So, like, you have zero on the map, you, you functionally are almost guaranteed to get one. You know, you have two on the map, you, your, your chances go down. Okay? Uh, you know, your chances of getting a new one and getting all six out is really, really low. So the entire time, you're just trying to spawn pogs, spawn pogs, spawn pogs. All right. So if I can knock you down to your, you know, last few guys, and I still have my haha -ha Joker, which functionally is offensively okay. And I'm not talking about having him with exospecs and all this other jazz. I'm just saying just having him exist. As long as I'm on this map, I can constantly generate high value pressure with no risk. No risk. Okay. You can say, well, but but Dark Logos, what if your opponent mind controls the pogs? Well, okay, yeah. All right, that's the only risk. My opponent mind controls a pog. Big whoop. Okay. But realistically as as we think about this if if i paid five points and i generate a prop off of my first second hell even my fourth roll going into the mid game how much does that change the game okay uh if i gen if my main dps got hurt how much does it change the game that all of a sudden I get Steel Bow out and now I have a 10 attack, 2 damage range combat expert with precision strike and sidestep in flight? You, you know, how much does it change the game if I have a character, you know, I'm fighting a character that has super senses and I roll bolt and now I have precision strike? You know, there, there are a lot of different things that these pogs can just flip the value of the game and for their point investment they're too cheap so if someone said hey edward this map bonus is 15 points i would have said oh yeah that's fine that's fine because you may roll derpy and you know you know at max you might get two out it's still a little cheap but yeah like that's fine all right or, and your constellation is you get to pick two. I would have been fine with that. Uh, maybe not Crimson Sage, just to make people sort of think twice about uh, picking the map bonus. You know, I would have said like, hey, I give you Tank, I give you Sting, and I give you uh, Monolith. Because now you can have some new creative things with that. Okay, you have a flying giant, so you can carry around uh, flyers. Okay, so so I, I would like that. So when I I look at these pogs, and uh, and I look at this map, I can say that these pogs are optimized for this map. They work really well on this map. You have some elevation too. Monolith can quake people, knock them off of uh elevation uh tank can charge you super strength knock someone off of elevation uh crimson sage has force blast knocking people off of elevation so like your first three pogs just say hey man i heard you like being on elevation screw you i'm going to knock you off of elevation free damage so you could get single target quake and then take two more. You could get punched by tank for three to five damage and take two more. So there, there, there are some things that I'm like, bruh, y'all didn't think this through. Y'all didn't think this through. There's, there's some problems. The, the concern that I have going forward are in a multitude of levels, okay? 
problem number one. Why am I going to play any map but this? Problem number two. The game becomes hyper-focused because everything is about playing on this map. Problem number three. Too many teams try to abuse getting a free five-point prob. Okay. So let's let's break into it. Why am I doing VIG if this map exists? And you can say, but Dark Logos, you can you can run the theme team and pick another map. Yeah, I could pick another map. But am I going to knowingly at that time give my opponent a free five point prob? And I know some folks say would say like, well, that won't change the game that much. And I'm like, well, does it? Because if you know if I win map, you won't have a free five point prob. And my team will be highly optimized for Stark Tower. Could you also do well on your map and also well on Stark Tower? And that's that's the real question. Because you now have to build a team for two maps if you decide not to optimize for uh, Stark Tower. And that and, and I think that's something that that we haven't had to deal with in years since ranks. Because the moment that ranks was thrown down, their range value was functionally cut in half. And in some cases knocked down to a third. So you have figures that you are extremely overpaying for because of the matchup. All right. If I completely optimize my team for ranks, I could my value in points of my team could easily e I mean uh, easily go from 300 to plus 150 of value. Same thing goes here, except I can go from 300 points of value optimize at minimal go up to about 375 points of value just because of the pogs just because of the pogs alone let and not not even the other shenanigans that i can do if i can get three pogs on the field three pogs on the field good luck to you buddy good luck because I have a, a, a lot of free value. EarthX Cap comes in, the, the Connelly. Oh, hey, guess what? I roll leadership. Tokens off all of y'all. But, okay, I, I'll, I'll, I'll unpack that a little bit later. But going back is, why am I picking a VIG map, Howard Brock? I know they look cool. But if I'm playing high level competition and I have these bonuses, what is what is VIG going to do to compete with that? Is is WizKids going to let you put map bonuses that are equal to this on VIG maps? Because if not, I'm sorry. It's it's going to be a problem, you know, unless there's another map with some other type of dumb special rules. That's that's it. You would need to have some other dumb special rules to compete with this map. OK, let's let's sort of progress on. About teams. I brought up EarthX cap, which is sort of appropriate considering that this is the earth x map okay but earth x cap says hey man i'm i'm a pog generator army's best friend all day every day and and most people don't question that uh and and he's been around the game long enough that he finally you know saw his own set that he belongs in uh, up here, you know, so that's good. But Earth, Earth X Cap 
could be optimized for this map. There are a ton of other characters that can be optimized for this map, and I'm not going to really go in into it, but we too much. But we already know, like, hey, Gotham City can just switch from the Gotham uh, from the uh, what map? The uh, Iceberg Lounge to this map easily. Okay, and get a lot more fighting power. A lot more fighting power. Okay, and, and needless to say, there's hindering on the map. So you don't really have to worry about your Batman ally team ability and stuff. Okay, so figures that start to be optimized on this map or care or, or figures that can buff pogs, knock people off of elevation, restrict movement. All sorts of blatantly obvious things that happens when you have a map like this. With the corners, you know, stopping figures from like hiding in the corners, it artificially chokes the map. So you're taking away a lot of movement off of the map. So that, number one, you can keep, supposedly, keep clear the, the space with the, the tokens and the rules written down. But people are going to jump on that anyway. They're going to bust through that blocking terrain anyway, okay, if they need to. But other than that, uh, you have this elevated terrain and you have this pit area and then you have this blocking which normally doesn't hinder anything, but you're on the indoor, so it goes all the way to the ceiling. So why are you on elevated in some cases, except to shut down some lanes of approach? And that's all you can do. Which if you set up earlier on in the right parts of this map and you can't be targeted, but you can target down, your opponent is at a huge disadvantage. This, this map gives a strong advantage to who goes first. In most cases, it gives a very strong advantage to who goes first. Now, when we start looking at figures and combos and cool stuff, we can say, but hey, Exospecs opens things up, right? Because now I can start picking these powers that are good on these maps. And you can say, yeah, that's great. I can, I can start doing that. But that's an additional 12-point investment. Now, I know a lot of you say, like, that's the 12-point investment everybody's paying already. Okay, great. But even still, if you choose not to, you are now even more than before forced to go down the Exospecs path. All right. The other thing that we are looking at in terms of figure selection is if you don't fly, good luck. Good luck. There are too many shenanigans that you can do on this map that just punishes non-flyers. If you do not have improved movement, ignores elevated, good luck. If you don't have improved targeting, ignores elevated, good luck. That hyper restricts the game. It hyper restricts the game. Because now, all of a sudden, uh, Green Arrow is on everybody's team. Not because people like Green Arrow, but because Green Arrow is the most optimized character. So now the game turns into hunt and trap Green Arrows while they shoot each other down. And eventually they come into the middle and slap fight each other. Okay, you know, the green arrow with exospecs is at a better position than the green arrow without exospecs. So, there are a multitude of problems that just arise because of all this. Now, the, the, the last part, I, I really just want to get into is 
if we're if we're going down this path, how much dumber do the rest of the maps have to be to compete? Like realistically, uh, there's no rule that says these these bonuses in the constellations have to be five points. There's there's no rule. This is this is whole new territory. Okay. These these map bonuses could cost 50 points if you want them to, whiz kids. And it could specifically say if a character named Thanos on the map, he only takes one damage. Oh, I'll pay 50 points for that. He takes he takes one damage no matter what. All right. Yeah, I'll pay 50 points to make my Thanos stupid. You know, he only takes one damage and can't be healed or something like that. Oh, okay, great. I'll do that. That makes my, uh, you know, classic Thanos uh, on the throne completely immortal. Like, I can kill all the heroes and snap my fingers and all that jazz and have the complete fantasy reawoken in my soul or something like that. You know, these, they don't have to be five points. It's just they don't have to be five points we can easily just say, all right, what happens if the points go up? What changes? If the points go down, what changes? Is this even a good idea? And I am pro-Pog, but I'm also for Pogs costing something. And five-point Pogs... Let me rephrase this. Five points for these pogs is too cheap. If you want to maintain any semblance of game balance, five points for these pogs is too cheap. And it, pretending that it's all good and fine is, is delusional. All right. So let's sort of wrap this up and go into teams abusing getting a five-point prop. I, I I was a little bit hyperbolic when I you know I brought up hey check this out now overdrive teams with shredder now have a five point free pog that's that's just there but I, I would like to to expand that what would happen if this map was legal and Tyler said I can play EarthX map have a little bit more of a fight, but know that if I face Gotham City and and I lose map, that I will have a five point pog for prop because this team didn't have any prop. Or if I win map, not only would I have whales, I could have my mini shredder, uh, since it's so resilient, also have the ability to try to roll to call in more fodder which if my opponent kills i can colossal retaliate on he would do that all day every day i i do not see the reason why not to now you would say is but but dark logos if he wins map he would have a tough time uh not that much of a tougher time against most teams Really not that much of a tougher time. He could still move up rather safely and and not really get injured. Okay. So I I know it it seems that a five point prob doesn't seem to be this big boogeyman, but a five point prob allows teams to be a lot more reckless a lot less considerate of, and in my thought process, uh, design of the team, you can cram in a lot more offense because of that. And it, it just is, I, I don't, I don't want to say it's a spit in the face of the players because it's not. It's a disregard to the history of the game. Okay. It, 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 for basketball fans, it's like like someone saying, if I make a layup, I have a chance to get an additional point if the uh, refs think that I did a good job. 
Like, that's really what it is. Okay, so I, I don't like how that changes the game so much. And one of the other elements that just changes the game realistically with the five-point prob is, let's just say I already have two props. And now I have three props. Or I go into, you know, the George Masu effect, the prob wall. And I have four props or five props. Now I'm adding in another prob in. At, at what point in time does having that many props become oppressive to your opponent? Okay. You know, how many times is, you know, will it actually happen that my opponent can't do much because I've propped them out of it? you know, three, four, five times. And it doesn't seem bad because there's not that many teams that do it, but a prop wall is a heavy control. It is a heavy control because if you have to roll a 50-50, rolling four or five times on a roll, doesn't matter how good of a character it is, eventually you will miss. So... I, I like to say it's like, yeah, I, I don't want to be chicken little and say, oh, the sky's falling. You know, like, no, the, the sky's not falling. But I think whiz kids, if they're going to have a good relationship with The Rock, if they're going to have a healthy relationship with the players, I think they should ban this map. I really do think they should ban this map for competitive play. I also think that they should come back and put a pause on any more of these location bonuses. I really believe they should. And I think what they need to evaluate is, are people getting too much value for these bonuses? And then sort of rein them in. Okay? Like I said, or, or better yet, WizKids could have routed this map to say, Hey guys, the the starting cost or the the base cost for this location bonus is 15 points. I, again, if I paid 15 points for a chance of generating pogs, I think that's balanced out or guaranteed for the entire game I get one pog. I think that ba is balanced. That is that is fair. I think that's fair for the stats. Okay? I think the problem comes in is that WizKids, to get people to use mechanics, have said, look, um, uh, guess what, guys? Uh, if, if, if you are looking at this situation and you're looking at this new mechanic and you're sort of iffy about it, uh, you know, it, it's a cheap entry fee. And they'll start the cheap entry fee at first. And then when people complain, then they'll make it cheaper and cheaper. And when they realize it's got out of control, then they nerf it all and then disregard it all. And I don't think that's a good idea. I think that this potentially can raise a lot of positive uh, insight on the game. It adds another positive layer to the game. But I do think it is necessary that these get reined in really reined in because if i pay 15 i'm uh, sorry i pay 10 points for thunderstrike or i pay 10 points for molnir i don't get anything even close to as strong as that type of game effect for this map bonus even the constellation if if i even have the, the strongest equipment right now in the game in terms of just overall effect is Casket of Ancient Winters. And Casket of Ancient Winters has so many loopholes that it's not even usable. And you're telling me that for five points, I have something way stronger than Casket of Ancient Winters. That's that's a problem. So um, I'm going to end the show with some questions from Malcolm Rush. He, he's been sending me some uh, cool ones. And uh, 
I'm going to try to like blitzkrieg through it. All right. Uh, best and worst of support characters. Uh, improving all the characters' abilities in the game. Uh, best support character right now has to be Moria McTaggart. Uh, worst support character right now. I, I, to be honest, I don't think there really is a bad one. There's uh, most most support characters are really really good or at worst playable. Uh, so uh, then he goes on to say, uh, what are their powers or abilities or traits? Just pretty much just buff X keyword. That's really all you need to have is I buff X keyword or I lock down X keyword. Uh, team abilities, it, the team abilities don't matter as much anymore for supports. Like, JSA and Defenders sort of used to, but they stopped making it so that you can hit a, a 20 base defense or a 19 base defense character. Uh, because I guess game design said that that was just too powerful looking back at the War of Light era. Uh, the best supporting resource right now is the Punisher van. Sadly. Uh, it's a better support element than the Blackbird is. I know some of you say, but, but, you, but Dark Logos, I can summon in Ghost Guys. Yeah, you can, but most of the way people play it in 300, they're, go they're going to kill your bird before you get two Ghost Guys in. So you, you really have to ask yourself, uh, are you playing the bird for a Ghost Army? And if you are, then what's changed in how you're playing it? Like, because you're not pay playing 50-point jet. Uh, relics, like I said, Casket of Ancient Winners. Casket of Ancient Winners is probably by far, could be one of the best support uh, equipment, if and only if it didn't have its limitations with the keywords. I think that was the worst thing they could have done for it. They could have at least said Asgardian. Okay, bam. All right, great. All right, if you're Asgardian, you're used to uh, freaking Lusaheim or Musa. I think Musaheim is the one's on fire. Whichever one's on, whichever everyone's the ice where the ice giants are at. Uh, you know, that could have been you know a a nice little side bonus. It would have made people actually think about that set and then still look at that set later on instead of say oh yeah you know deities and power cosmic guys give the two f middle fingers up to that object you know so yeah um but i still think it's still one of the strongest support ones the the second strongest one in terms of support uh is uh blood axe to give somebody battlefield battle fury in steel energy I think that's really good. I just think most people do not know how to utilize a character with that type of equipment. Um, so anyway, uh, two, what do you uh, look for in Heroclix characters, equipment relics, and or resources to help out your other weaker characters and or improve other characters? I, I mainly am looking for number one, can I make some special power do something that it wasn't intended to do? Like that's the first thing that I, I look for. Um, there's there's one thing my, my first student, Tom, says is, I'm looking to have an unfair fight. That's the whole goal. I'm looking to have an unfair fight. Don't fight fair. Have an unfair fight. And everybody that wins is doing that. They're creating an unfair situation for you due to their selection of figures. Okay? I mean, that's the whole purpose of counter meta. The, the second thing I look for is stat manipulation. I mean, hammers, hammers are dumb, but they by far the strongest game resource ever because Book of the Skulls gives you powers on top of the hammers giving you powers. So, yeah. Uh, how can Heroclix players help support their Heroclix community? Uh, locally, talk to one another, build each other up, uh, give each other advice, you know, don't sit there and be like, I got this secret strat and, and I'm never going to tell anybody because if you talk to somebody, you might get uh, a stronger strat, you know, there. So, so just go ahead 
and talk with your local guys. And if someone needs to borrow something and you're not using it, let them use it. Okay? I think that's a really important thing that most people don't do, uh, is letting people borrow stuff because that's how you increase um, activity in the community. Uh, five, let's see next up. If you can give a Hero Clicks uh, to another Hero Clicks player for a Christmas present, what would that Hero Clicks uh, be? If I really was nice, uh, I would probably give someone uh, my KC Batman because I thought he would be more broken than what he ended up being, and I never really am playing him. And he retired, so yeah. Uh, if another Heroclix player will give you a Heroclix for a gift, what would you like and why? At this stage, if someone was to just give me a gift, uh, it would either have to be a Trouble Alert Wonder Woman or a Trouble Alert Firestorm. One of those two. All right, uh, he's got a couple more. Um, all right, here we go. Uh, which sets are you looking forward in two thousand forward in two thousand nineteen? Uh, realistically, I am looking forward to uh, Earth X. I'm also looking forward to X Men, uh, the animated series. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. No, 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 no. Yeah. So I, I want my morph. He died in the first episode, but he died for our plot. All that plot. Uh, which figures uh, do you wish Hope WizKids put in those sets? Morph. Just Morph. And, and I know, again, like, why Morph? Like, again, I, I think someone broke down why uh, X-Men the Animated Series is a great show. Is that it establishes from the first um, episode that people can die. So it establishes stakes from the first episode. You have an immediate threat established. You don't know where these threats are coming from. These threats can come from anywhere. You have one place that's safe, and they know where you live. So how long is home home? X-Men. So happy for it. Uh, three, what other sets, uh, cons slash hero clicks, characters do you want WizKids to make for 2019? Realistically, give me a non-sucky blue Marvel, give me an icon, and then I can... And Justice Aran, you don't want to hear me again. You don't want to deal with me again. You don't want to see me at another world's tournament. Okay? I will, I will back off this game. I will shut this podcast down for six months. Let me design Icon or Soul Brother. You let me do those two things. I am ghost- for six months straight ghost okay you will not hear from me for six months okay so yeah right there uh that's what i would want uh any advice or suggestions uh to whiz kids rock uh to make next year better than this year uh yeah number one rock find somebody better than gamer mats I know you're in contract with them for whatever. Once that contract's over, find somebody better than Gamer Mats. Because the shipping thing is a problem. Uh, again, Rock, people need to respect your time. They need to schedule their events ahead of time. Events need to be scheduled four to five months out. The, the last minute BS has... It realistically has to stop. Uh, and, and the main reason I would say that is, is being attached to WizKids, you, you, were, you have merged with, with the freaking Nova Core Force. You are Nova Prime now. You, you are Nova Prime, Howard Brock. Freaking go out there and slay all the Phalanx invasion and slay uh, the, the negative zone invasion. Just, just do it. Okay, you you don't have to hit folks over with the big stick, but you just go in and say like, look, I got kits, I got prizing, what's up? I need, I'm looking at these dates. 
I got the Magic Magic the Gathering schedule here right in front of me. I know all of their release dates of when their big stuff is happening. We are before every, I want this, you know, event before every Magic the Gathering uh, release date. I want Rock Online to be popping like this. I, you know, I'm, I'm looking for folks to be doing this, that, and the other. That's what I want. So that when all said and done, I'm like, oh, wow. Rock proved that given the resources, they could do a better job than WizKids, which I know they could do. Okay? At least for the extracurricular stuff. Now, worlds and all other stuff, yeah, that's a different story. Um, WizKids, number one, get, get, get your stuff in order. If, if we're going to be at PAX again this year let us know now if if worlds is going to be you know next year at origins let us know now because i think that's a good idea you know u.s nats and international nats you know let us know at the beginning of the year you know the wko schedules let us know at the beginning of the year because in spite of shipments you can always schedule your tournaments and if those events are sealed for people that are looking to get their qualification, they're still going to show up to a sealed event. So even if you have China distribution problems, people are still going to show up at a sealed event uh, because they want to go to U.S. Nats. They want to go uh, to Rocktober. They want to go to uh, Worlds. They need their points. So just get your schedule out there. And if folks don't act right, Kick them to the curb and get somebody else because there are too many venues that would want to run a WKO. Um, but like I said, like respect people's time. I, I do my best to respect people's time. I don't play around with people. You know, I want to know, are we doing this or are we not? All right. Uh, so, yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, any advice or suggestions to a player? Uh, or to help players to make hero clicks more fun for the next year. Uh, number one, chill the hell out. Like, it's not the sky's not falling because your your the set isn't the way that you wanted it, or you know the the people the figures that you wanted aren't in the set. Everybody just chill. All right. Um, number two, go to a big event this year. If if your big event is a WKL, go to a big event. Where it's not just your local guys. Go, you know, travel outside the Shire. All right. There's an adventure waiting. There's an adventure waiting outside the Shire. And, and if anything, you will make a friend away from your venue. Someone that you can confide all your Dark Hero Clicks ideas with. That you all can, can be pen pals and stuff. And write back, you know, the darkest things that you thought up and how each of your venues responded to uh, the, the corresponding ideas of your network. There, there, at least for that. Um, and, and the last thing I would say is don't go broke on this game. Don't go broke on this game. Uh, there, there's too many elements that they make obsolete. In a in its in its own same cycle, that I would just tell anybody that serious, like, don't go broke on this game. On this game, and if if you have stuff that you're not playing, go sell it. Go sell it. Uh, if you have stuff that you you have no sentimental value uh, held to it, go sell it. So what if you sell it at a loss? You still are getting that money back. You're getting something back, and someone else is enjoying what's just sitting um, in in your apartment or in your house or your garage or whatever. So, uh, yeah. Uh, anyway, he makes a joke about him being a Japanese emperor. So, uh, yeah. So that's that's all the questions I'm gonna pretty much answer from Malcolm this time. Uh, I like to thank Malcolm Rush for sending some questions. I know uh, I've been a little bit uh, chicken chicken little dinner. Uh, this uh, episode, but WizKids, please, 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 please reevaluate your map policy. 
Re-map, reevaluate your map policy because uh, five points for a problem. That's a problem. So, anyway, uh, that's the end of today's show. Uh, you can f- uh, hit the subscribe button, but we already know that's pretty much a, a pointless affair. Uh, so, <laughs> you can uh, just go ahead and follow me on Twitter at StartOverPod. It came from outer space and told me in the mystical realm of foresight on planet 52 Zeta 9B36, there's a little elf who knows all but cannot leave his den. How sad. Can't leave his den. I wonder how he eats. Maybe some like magical force or something. You know, hey, I'm not an elf. Uh, you can follow me on Twitter. You can know when every time you can know every time a new shows up, because YouTube hates YouTuber, but it but it doesn't hate Twitter. So go ahead and follow me on Twitter. Find out when the new show is up. You can also email me at startingoverpodcast at gmail dot com. That's startingoverpodcast at gmail dot com. If you wish to opine, keep it piffy, keep it interesting, keep it uh, 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 Autobot baby. Uh, let me know what you think of the Earth X set so far. And if there's anything interesting on it, I, I like Stampede because uh, uh, the dinosaur guy, whatever his name is, because I see OP stuff happening. I just do. Uh, you can also donate to the show uh, by going to startingoverpodcast.blogspot.com. And once you go there, you can go on to the donate button. And uh, everything you donate goes to making the show better. Uh, I did buy a webcam. And I did shoot an episode with the webcam, and I did talk about exospecs, and then I noticed that the sound quality was bad because the sound was going through the uh, webcam mic instead of the uh, standard uh, mic, the Yeti mic that I have. So, uh, sadly, I have to ditch the footage. So, yeah. Uh, So, I'm back to the standard recording for a whole new year. So, yeah, uh, that's about it. Uh, a brother got some some job interviews lined up, so hopefully uh, I can make some transitions uh, this upcoming year. And uh, that's it. I will check you all later. And remember, like always, we all have to start over sometime.